Smash mm, drunk. Hey folks, uh, rather than doing a regular review for Thursday, I'm going to be doing an LP for the original Simpsons arcade game. And this is one of those games where it seems kind of dumb to do just a regular review because it's the ultimate what you see is what you get type of game. Uh, you play as the Simpsons, it's a beat 'em up, you got all four characters to choose from. Uh, very loyal to the source material, as you can see, as you can see and it's about it. You know, it's pretty simple. Um, that said, this is a really fun game. It's very high energy. The pacing is great. This is made by Konami back in the old days. Uh, 1991 is when this was made. So um, let's get going here. And I've got this set up where I can play as uh, each character here. So, And Smithers, for some reason, is robbing a jewelry store for a, a big-ass diamond. Maggie catches it in her mouth. Apparently that's a good enough pacifier for her for some reason. And uh, yeah, I don't know why Smithers would be stealing a a freaking diamond. Like, I don't know. Maybe he wants to impress Mr. Burns. But then again, Mr. Burns appears to be, uh, you know, behind this whole plot here, but whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, but yeah, this is a really fun game. It is, um, yikes. <laughs> it's got all sorts of fun little, uh, arcade, uh, kitschiness to it, like Mario, uh, Mario, like Marge getting, uh, pressed up against the screen there. Let's see if I can hit someone with this. Yeah. But yeah, Marge has got her trusty vacuum cleaner. Let's see if I can hit freaking dorky ass Martin Prince. Apparently not. They do run away appropriately, though. Um, I'm lucky enough to live in an area here in Albuquerque where um, we have a bar in town, downtown Albuquerque, uh, called Sister. And um, it, they had this game, the four-player cabinet, for a short period of time. My girlfriend and I both took uh, $2 worth of quarters each to try and beat it. We got to the second-to-last level. Ooh. Uh, so, I have beaten this game before, it's, you know, there's not much to it, etc. This, you know, beat em up, it's, it's not that exhilarating or anything like that. It's just a good time, it's, um, with beat em ups it's all about, uh, pacing and, you know, not knowing what to expect next and that sort of thing. Um, Marge's, the sound of Marge's, uh, vacuum that squeaking cartoon sound effect. Uh, you know, when I, when I did the X-Men Let's Play, you know, people talked about the uh, Colossus Scream being a summoning horn for everybody. Like, oh, they have X-Men, because I can hear the Colossus. Well, this is kind of the same deal, where if you hear that, like, cartoony, that squeaking sound, I can't do it. But um, if you hear that, you knew, you know, there was an arcade nearby, and it had at least one good game, The Simpsons. So yeah, this this game had its own summoning horn, so to speak. But yeah, um, we are chasing Mr. Smithers, Waylon Smithers, who is now floating away in a uh, hit buttons. Good idea. Fuck you, yeah. Big time. I think that just gets you ex extra lives or something, I don't know. But yeah, if if the typical, wow, I won by one. If the typical, yeah, if the typical uh, Simpsons stuff here looks a little different, and if you don't recognize a lot of the enemies or characters here, um, that's because some of them were seriously just made up for this game. Um, like whoever this guy is. Oops, didn't mean to do that, but, um, yeah, uh, this game was made in 1991, I think it was March 91, at least that's when it came out in North America. <laughs> you can throw a dog at people. Um, and, uh, so yeah, this would have come out in the middle of Season 2 for The Simpsons, so yeah, that's how... That's how quickly this became a hit. It was the middle of uh, 
season two and they're, you're already getting like a high profile developer like uh, Konami. Hey, I can't grab this? What the hell? Hmm. There's Marvin Monroe, psychiatrist at large. <laughs> he was a, a big part of the first couple seasons and then he was just kind of forgotten about after that. Um, but yeah, this this would have come out. Um, I think season two ended in sometime in uh, I don't know September, I think, or or no, it ended sometime in the in May or something like that. So this came out smack dab season two. So yeah, they they must have already been making this uh, as season two was still be in production. Uh, the TV show itself started in December of 89. I Whoa, what the heck? I don't know when the Tracy Ullman show clip and uh, aired. But the uh, Simpsons, the first episode aired in December of 89. So they can just barely get away with saying it spans however many decades, even though it's a matter of weeks. But whatever. Um... But yeah, back then, the TV show, uh, people talk about the glory days of The Simpsons, um, and season two is definitely the beginning of that. Season one is a bit rough around the edges, at least for my taste. There's still some laughs and some funny stuff, but, you know, it's, it's kind of weird to watch now because it's like Mr. Burns is practically, you know, a regular cast member. He's like uh, in every episode, seemingly. Um, which is kind of weird. I think they wanted him to be, like, the bad guy every week. But instead, The Simpsons grew to be, like, this big thing. It's funny, you'd think that would be, like, a, you know, like a power-up. But instead, it's something you throw. You know, I should really be utilizing the uh, jump more often. Because that's what I do at the actual arcade. But instead, I'm playing this any way I can. Um, I should mention the home ports very quickly. Uh, yeah, this game did get home ports, and none of them were to any home consoles. Uh, no uh, Super Nintendo, no NES, no Sega Genesis, no Turbo Graphics. But instead, it got ports on uh, Commodore 64 and DOS. And they're both pretty bad. Like, they're both choppy and goofy and just not good. Alright, here we got our second boss fight. And it's this... It's, uh, what, what do they call him? Oh, it's, uh, Danson Pete, or Handsome Pete, or Danson Pete? I can't remember. What the fuck? I think it's Dancing Pete from when, uh, Krusty takes on an alias. Okay, let's play as Homer. Oh, shit. And Homer just uses his fists like a, like a brute. And a cool looking uh, jump kick. In fact, for some reason, I think his jump kick is a lot better than Marge's. Marge's is a bit quicker, but Homer seems to do a little more damage, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe all the original voices uh, Dan Castellaneta, I can't say his name right. But uh, yeah, Nancy Cartwright, all those folks are all. Uh, here in this game, I believe. God, this guy is like making me eat all sorts of quarters. It's hard to play, even a beat em up, it's hard to play and do this at the same time. And now he falls and he dies. It would have been a funny touch if he uh, bounced along the, the cliff, like when he tried to skateboard over the canyon in that one episode from season three. Yeah, anyway, like I was saying, uh, the glory days of The Simpsons, as people call them, uh, are called as such because they had an amazing writing staff back then, um, starting with uh, contributors with guys like Brad Bird, uh, who, of course, became a famous director later on, and, um, oh god, I hate these frogs. Oh, does that take away life when I do that? I forgot. Each ah, screw you. Um, who else did they have? Um, I remember uh, David Isaacs was uh, part of The Simpsons for a little bit. I don't think he did a whole lot, but he wrote for MASH, he wrote for Cheers, he wrote for Frasier. He's a, he was always a, a very good TV writer. 
Um, and of course, Conan O'Brien showed up in season four, and he wrote some of the very best episodes ever, like Homer Goes to College, uh, Marge vs. the Monorail. Um, I think the one where Bart has a crush on the uh, on Pastor Lovejoy's daughter. I think he did that one too. I can't remember. But yeah, just the writing back then was just head and shoulders above anything else on TV. And I think I maintain that's what made The Simpsons so much fun it was because it was it really was different in that not it, it wasn't coasting on the novelty of like oh it's a cartoon but for adults and it's not like the Flintstones either. This is like more than a sitcom. It became you know like oh with with animation we can do all sorts of other stuff that we couldn't normally otherwise. And uh, they really took advantage of that, and the show was a lot of fun from day one, at least especially for me. I didn't get every reference, I didn't get every joke, but the stuff I did get, I laughed really hard at. Um, especially, you know, since we're in the uh, halloween you know, this ghoulish environment, the um, Treehouse of Horror episodes were absolutely must-watch. Appointment viewing. Um, my girlfriend still talks about to this day. She uh, missed out on trick-or-treating deliberately. She skipped trick-or-treating one year so she could stay home and watch Treehouse of Horror. Uh, this would have been like 94, 95, something like that. So she, she, it was just so she could... Uh, I think that year was like the Shinnin, the Simpsons parody of The Shining, which... Really, it, which holds up today as one of my favorite episodes ever. Let's see, what are some of my other favorite Simpsons episodes? You can't go wrong with Last Exit to Springfield. That's the one where Homer unknowingly, or, you know, kind of bumbles his way into becoming a, uh, uh, the union leader for his, uh, for all the workers at the uh, power plant. That one is just like one laugh out loud joke after another. I love that episode. I think everybody loves that episode. And of course, there's like uh, Hank Scorpio is a really funny one. G you gotta love that. Um, and of course, the discussion has to come up like, oh, the Simpsons used to be so great. What happened? What went wrong? And every, you know, everybody's got their own cutoff point to when it started to, you know, to slip a little. For me, it's season ten is when it stopped being like every episode being must watch and it was every other episode then it was every third episode and then it was one out of every six or seven episodes and um one reason i don't hear a whole lot of people talk about is is just the the voice acting really went south it it, it they started to phone it in i really believe that but um you know like, oh, anything I say is funny? Okay, then I'll just... Who are these people? Not a clue who these folks are. Yeah, I could really use a second player here. <laughs> that would be ideal. Oh, that reminds me, if you do have a second player, um, at least one other player, uh, you can do combination moves between the two... between the two characters, which is always fun. Any sort of interactivity between... Characters. All right, let us move on to Bart, and he hits people with this skateboard. And he's interesting because he's a bit smaller, so he's a little harder to hit. He's easier to hide. Was there ever a Simpsons fighting game? Don't answer that. <laughs> I honestly don't know if there was, like, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game between... Yeah, I guess the Simpsons universe can lend itself to like a lot of different uh, games. It could be, you know, a game like this. It could be like a, uh, you know, one of those like card games, like versus card, <laughs> like uh, almost like a Magic the Gathering type thing where you, you've got your rules and all that sort of shit. But yeah. anyway. Yeah, this, this game came in two cabinets. There was a two player one, there was a four player one. Um, good stuff. And I think this game actually was available for a short time on uh, Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network, but like several years ago it got taken down. I think it was up there for like 
just a little bit, but uh, like maybe a few months, maybe a year, and then it just mysteriously vanished. I don't know, I guess Konami maybe plays hardball with these, with these kind of properties. I think there was like a quote-unquote remake of the Simpsons Arcade, but it's like one player only, and it's just, damn it. It's just not that good, and it doesn't have the same charm, whereas this has the goofy pixel art. Yeah, there's Bo. Yeah, Flaming Mo is another great episode. Um, and at Aerosmith, I remember seeing that one when it first aired. That was a lot of fun. I was a huge Aerosmith fan when I was growing up. So, loved that. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, gotta get this slingshot over here. Yeah, there's plenty of weapons in this game. Can I pick that up? Or no? There we go. Yeah, who are these guys? Who's this guy? <laughs> okay, I think, yeah, Bleeding Gums Murphy and... Um, I, I want to say, like, he was a big part of the first couple seasons, too. Not a big part, but he was in more than one episode, I think. I think I can throw this, but I have to run out of this stuff first. What does this guy think he is? Kung Lao with throwing his hat? Ooh, check it out. Aliens. Simpsons. Aliens was another Konami game, although that is not the same Aliens. I'm going to play some Simpsons. Yo, dog, you like Simpsons? Well, now you can play Simpsons in your systems. Here we got a craps table, roulette wheel. Actually, that's just a roulette wheel. That's not a craps table. That's just the roulette setup. Yeah, a lot of re unrecognizable characters here. Who's asleep back there? Is that Barney? Oh, no, this is the next boss. Whoever this guy is. Drunk guy. I forget what Lisa uses. Does she use her saxophone? Or what? I don't know. Yeah, Simpsons was a pretty regular part of my childhood. I watched it anytime it was on, anytime reruns were on. Um... Another one of my favorite episodes was the parody of Rear Window, where Bart breaks his leg, they get a pool. It is a fine barn, but it is no pool, English. <laughs> or no, it is a fine barn, English, but it is no pool. Do it! And, um, yeah, Bart ends up breaking his uh, arm. Hang on, hang on a second. Oh. There we go. My thing came undone. There we go. Oh, yeah, since I have both, uh, I didn't realize I could do that. Hey, we can play this multiplayer, but it's the same freaking player doing the same thing. Okay. So I could conceivably play this with all four players. I'll do that later. I didn't realize I could do that. By the way, here in Albuquerque, it is. I'm recording this on a Wednesday, and it is snowing. This is like the fourth day out of the last five that it snowed. We're in the middle of February. I'm not used to this. It's not what I moved down here for. Anyway. Yeah, what was I saying? Rear window parody. Um, and then Bart turns it. <laughs> Marge says he's turning isolated and weird. And uh, he uh, he starts writing a play and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, hey, that sounds familiar. I remember what, when I was a kid, when I got really overly isolated and weird, it was, um, I started doing stuff like I would try and invent my own Magic the Gathering card system. Um, and of course it had to be all like, fantasy based and it wasn't anything special it wasn't anything unique that's for sure but I would take note cards and like do these crappy little drawings on them and come up with spells and come up with status ailments and all this other crap and it was all in all it was really bad <laughs> it wasn't really worth it but it was fun to make it was fun to uh, invent something like that all right let's get to uh yeah, actually, let's bring, uh... Oh, whoops. 
Let's get Homer in here. I think my my main character is uh, is Lisa. Because when I try and when I try and control his Homer, okay, now I can control his Homer. There we go. Yeah, anybody else out there wa listening or watching, let me know what your weird little projects were like that you haven't. You don't tell anybody else about them. You just work on them because they're fun. That's like what Bart had going on in that episode where he was like, uh, <laughs> he was going to force Lisa to listen to his play or whatever it was. And it's just tacky and dumb. And he's doing all the accents and the voices and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Mine was to try and invent a Magic the Gathering type thing. Hey, there's the three-eyed fish. That was a big, uh... A big thing from the early seasons. Was that season one or season two? I want to say that was season one. Yeah, in my opinion, the show didn't get really good until season three. That's when it was just like every single episode is just has at least three or four laugh out loud funny gags. <laughs> now we. We got squirrels that are all... Oh, we got Sideshow Bob. Can I get this? I can. Nice. At least I got it. Do I fight Sideshow Bob? No, I do not. Oh, this guy's going to be tough. There we go. That's, I wonder if Flanders appears in this game or no. I don't remember if he does or not. Okay, now we fight a bear. Okay, sure. Yeah, I remember uh, my girlfriend and I, when we played this at the bar, we just breezed right through this this part. So I don't really remember this. Let's get Marge in there. Yeah, I can only have two players in at the same time, unfortunately. I'm trying to get everybody else in, but it's not working. Yeah, it's just a battle of attrition. You just... <laughs> I don't care about the falling rocks or anything like that. I just want to fucking... On with the game, please. That's how most uh, beat em ups end up anyway. Except for stuff like Final Fight or, uh, or uh, you know, other stuff like uh, stuff that actually where you can actually do moves and there's actual move sets and stuff like that. Oh, there goes Maggie. <laughs> the waterfall reminds me of uh, when the cops are after Millhouse for some reason, and they trap Millhouse at the end of the waterfall. And <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> it cuts to Tommy Lee Jones. I don't care. From uh, the fugitive. The fact that it's Millhouse always cracked me up. See so, you now, what what the hell is this, and what does it have to do with the Simpsons? <laughs> it's really weird. Oh, shit. Can I bring Homer back? Get into coins. Oh, Bart's in there. Okay. Uh, here we've got donuts, and um, it's like a cloud world. Here we've got Marge. I don't know. This is very strange. It's everything's in black and white. I'm somehow controlling two players. an LP. I'm being lazy instead of making a video, so just bear with me. You can shut the door if you want. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is kind of a boring stage. Can I throw these? I can. Now we've got 
nuclear power plant workers that lose their heads and basically fall apart like Lego figures if you if you hit them too much. It's just, like, what is this? I don't know. If this follows any kind of structure that, that's reminiscent of the show, uh, let me know, because I don't know what any of this is. Um, the thing is, though, is that the art style is so spot on, and the colors are so spot on. And, you know, it's got the Simpsons theme and all that, and it's got the fact that you can play that player one is Bart and all that sort of stuff is is perfect. Or player one is is Marge rather, and like each player is a different Simpsons character. It's a really good touch. Dag Nabbit. And yeah, anything that makes fun of old people, you know, I'm th I'm 38 now, going to be 39 soon. So anything that makes fun of old people, I'm... Okay, now we fight a giant bowling ball. Okay, yeah. Because that's the natural conclusion here. Um, yeah, any anything that uh, makes fun of old people, I'm all in on. And The Simpsons does an awesome job making fun of old people with Mr. Burns and his uh, musty old references <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. And of course... So I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Give me five bees for a quarter, they'd say. All that sort of stuff. I mean, okay, now we're getting into, like, Parodius territory. Like, what? I guess Konami just can't help themselves when it comes to certain stuff. Like, no, we can't have typical beat-em-up bosses. We gotta have a bowling ball with, you know, a radiator for teeth and other balls for arms. Just die. And it shoots bowling ball missiles. Oh, why wouldn't it? Can it please be over? It's more fun to play as Bart and Lisa, I think. They're, it feels like they're a little bit quicker. I'm just kind of stuck over here. How many forms does this thing have? Cool if I can get Bart in on the action. Oh, there we go. He's just kind of meandering around. And... <sighs> Finally. <laughs> Apparently, there was supposed. Speaking of animated TV shows, there was supposed to be a Beavis and Butthead arcade game that was kind of, sort of, in the in a similar vein to this game. Um. But the exception was that it was on some kind of like CD hardware or something like that. It had a really strange hardware Ready. setup. Wake up and Ready? Go. <laughs> Three player and four player. How convenient. That was easy. Did they tie or what? 84. Damn. Channel 6 News, Kent Brockman. And the eye in the sky, whatever that guy is. Ernie Pyle? Ernie Pie? I forget his name. But anyway, hopefully we'll see Kent Brockman here shortly. Yeah, see, there's. It, it, it's at this point where it's like, I kind of wish there was a little more variety in this game. But at the same time, I really appreciate all the different uh, settings. Uh, visiting different parts of the Simpsons universe, even if, you know, I don't recognize who these people are. But still, it's still fun. Yeah, I like the Maggie and Mr. Burns on the TV in the background there is a nice touch. Here we got Kung Lao Simpsons Edition back here. Kung Lao wins. Yeah, some of my, you know, I don't do a lot of good impressions, but some of mine are, uh, Two of my best are um, from The Simpsons. The first one, of course, is uh, Barney Gumble, where uh, you know that's that's where I get the snatch drunk. You know this. Oh, snatch drunk! That sounds like a terrible name. You know, just, that's not that good of a one. Uh, put on the spotlight. Put putting myself on the spot like that. Snatch drunk. But um, that's where that kind of came from because. Saying the acronym SNES like a word sounds makes you sound like you're drunk. And who's the most prolific drunk? 
in pop culture, it, to me, it's Barney Gumble. Ooh, I forgot about this thing. Since, since we're in a TV studio, we fight TV people. The TV uh, characters, made for TV things. Reminds me of that robot from uh, Futurama, whose name I'm drawing a blank on at the moment. But yeah, the other uh, the other uh, impression I do from The Simpsons, of course, it's Auto Man. You know the guitars are like double guitars, you know? All right. You know, yeah. I used to do a lot better one. I do it better when it, in the morning when my voice is a lot deeper. What? He's not the boss. So let me think. What other? What other? The only other impression that I do that I, I that I think is kind of funny is uh, Harry Carey, but I I kind of have to hold my nose for that one. So I'll wait a bit here till I get an opportunity to do that. Okay. Harry Carey here is the uh, having another beach aged Budweiser. Yeah, that's the extent of that. Sammy Sosa. Is the box here? Yeah. That's my Harry Carey. So Harry Carey, Barney Gumble, and Otto. Those are, like, the only impressions that I can do. Can't really do Mr. Burns. When I was uh, going through puberty, I could do Beavis pretty well. The Beavis laugh, especially. But then uh, the rest of puberty happened, and now I can't do it as well. Oh, I can also do the the, uh, the dude in The Simpsons who the, the pimple-faced teenager. With who, whose voice is always cracking? Here's your taco, sir. You know that guy. That's that's another one. And I guess the nerd voice that people are uh, asking me to do from I, I do it all the time on the podcast. Um, I stole it blatantly from my girl, blatantly from my girlfriend. It's kind of her thing. But um, are these power ups? Okay. So, um, yeah, the, the nerd voice is like a, a combination between um, one of Martin Prince's friends and uh, the, the kid, like the older kid. I don't know how to describe him. He's like a math nerd. But um, he's like, it's like a cross between him and Professor Frank, basically. That's so I'm saying. Well, actually, it should be obvious to the, you know, the most, the biggest moron, the, the, the most, uh, the most dim-witted person that the, the Simpsons arcade game is one of the very best beat-em-ups ever developed on, on the arcade platform. It should be obvious, you know, if, and, and if you don't believe that, then you don't have a valid opinion on anything that's ever existed, because if you don't believe that, then how can you be trusted to believe anything? What the hell is this, boss? I don't remember any of this. It's been a long time since I've played this. I just kind of spur of the moment decided to go for it. I don't know how long this video will be, actually. I have no idea how long it is right now. But, um... Who is this character? They do look strangely familiar. <laughs> Some kind of ninja... master... dude... But yeah, I, I feel like doing the last, uh, the last few, uh, you know, the last next couple levels in, in nothing but nerd voice. When I when I talk about uh, the hit detection in this game, I I, I really do believe that um, this, this game is, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not playing this game. It's pretty obvious that if you don't play. The Simpsons arcade game, you're not getting the full Simpsons experience, and you can't call yourself a real Simpsons fan. It's, it's, you're just cheating yourself, and as a result, you're cheating everybody else. We're, we fall victim to your own ignorance. You know, you're, you're subjecting everybody to your ignorance, when you should just stay out of the way and let the real fans be real fans. I don't know, I'm just, uh... Who the hell are you? Exactly, I just said that. Boy, it is snowing really bad outside here. Holy cow. Oh, there goes Smithers. Get him! Oh, I remember. Okay, this is about how far we got in the bar. I think we, we got to the power plant. 
but after uh, but <clears throat> excuse me but after, uh, but after that it was uh it was tough to tough times i used to do a pretty good mr burns but that's that kind of went by the wayside too smithers smithers hey Welcome to my world. <laughs> that doesn't sound like him at all Okay, so we must have gotten... I don't remember... Yeah, we didn't get this far at the bar. God, this is like not Mr. S this is like way before they uh, fleshed out the character of Waylon Smithers. Interesting. Sun <laughs> sound dial will be useless. Coming up with Mr. Smithers' lines from over the years. Did I get him? How come he's not flashing like a Ninja Turtles villain like everybody else here? Anyway, yeah, this is pretty much just an excuse to talk Simpsons to show off this entire game and uh, exploit the fact that uh, I can play two player even though it's just me. Look at all those CRT TVs in the background. All these. Give me those TVs. <laughs> Again, that does not sound like Mr. Burns at all. It sounds closer to freaking a character from Violent Storm or something. It, it, they got all the voices for the original for the the Simpsons family, which is cool. I keep getting distracted by it's snowing sideways outside. This is, I mean, I live in Albuquerque. It's ridiculous. All right. Boy, that skateboard can sure take a lot of abuse. I think it would snap in half by now or something. All right, let's see if I can. All right, he's gonna grow tank treads. Yeah, all of a sudden it's Armored Warriors. It's another awesome game, by the way. Really fun one. It's part of the Capcom beat 'em up bundle. Does anybody still play the uh, Capcom beat 'em up bundle online by any chance? Because uh, I'd love to play that with somebody, but um, on st I have it on Steam. But the lobbies are usually pretty barren. Um, if I run into anybody playing it, it's usually uh, Battle Circuit, the crazy, weird, uh, unreleased game. Which, you know, that, that's the more popular one because, uh, number one, it's it's really insane. And number two, it was never released. So, you know, people are pretty curious about that one. But when it comes to stuff like Armored Warriors and Final Fight, I'd rather play that stuff. Um, even, uh, what is the Warriors of Fate or something like that, I think it's called. I forget what the, the Feudal Japan one is called. Let's see if I can line them up here. There we go. Uh-oh, Lisa's almost out of... Well, actually, that's cheating, and you're cheating yourself. You didn't learn any lessons. It's like, yes, because that's the only reason people play video games, is to better themselves or whatever. People can't just shoot the shit and just have fun and dork around and do nothing and relax. Everything needs to be a personal challenge. Otherwise, it's... You cheat yourself. You didn't improve. You didn't gain anything. Etc. Et <laughs> He's shooting nuclear bombs at me. Jeez, it's a little reckless, don't you think? Gotta be close to the end here, I think. How many forms is this for Mr. Burns? I was gonna say, he's not moving, but... Gotta be close to the end here. 
running out of things to say here. There we go. Oh, now it's just him. <laughs> oh, there's Maggie. Can I move? No, I can't. Mm, much better. Oh. Wait, he put the pacifier in... Or she put the pacifier in his mouth. Maggie. Correct. Oh, okay. The end. So yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show off this game. I think this does a better job um, rather than do like a two minute video because that's all it would be is just me being like, yeah, it's the freaking Simpsons arcade game. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of craziness. It's you never know what's going to come next. Um, it's four player compatible. Even if you're you can even rig it like I just did <laughs> and inadvertently play two players. Um, but yeah, I love this game. Uh, a lot of good memories, um, and you could still make more memories <laughs> since this game, uh, it's, it's not a common arcade cabinet, but it's a popular one. It's in demand. Wouldn't be surprised if it's still, you, you know, out there somewhere. So maybe post pandemic, you can go, go looking for this one. It's a lot of fun. Um, and if you can't find an arcade, you can always, you know, play it any way you can. All right. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the the rest of your day. Cheers.